We have the potential release date and pricing for Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs, the RX 6950 XT, Beats, NVIDIA, and cheap GPUs under MSRP. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off today with an exclusive report over on WCCF Tech about Intel's upcoming GPU launch. This is something that got postponed from Q1 of this year until who knows when, because Intel actually hasn't been disclosing a whole lot about the delay that's going on behind the scenes with their GPUs. But WCCF Tech says that they've got some insider information that's coming out from Taiwan, especially since TSMC is making these GPUs. So we have a clearer picture, at least a leaked one, of what these GPUs are gonna cost and when they're coming out. So the A750, which is gonna be a higher end card from Intel and comparable to the RTX 3060, is gonna cost $350 and release at the end of May, early June. So that's this month, probably roughly in the time frame of Computex, which is still happening in Taiwan later this month. The A580 compared to the RTX 3050, it's gonna cost $280 and come out in the same time frame. And then the A380 will be comparable to the GTX 1650 and will cost $150. Now comparing those to the cards that they're lining up against, the 3060 has an MSRP of $330. So the Intel one is technically more expensive. And the A580 is actually slightly more expensive than the RTX 3050 coming in at $30 more expensive. The only one that actually seems reasonably priced based on MSRPs is the A380 coming in at $150 for GTX 1650 performance. If we compare that to AMD's RX 6400, which is only slightly slower than the 1650 for $170, this is roughly where you would want to see it. Obviously, this is not necessarily good pricing when you take into context the history of GPU pricing, but it does seem to be reasonable for the market that we're in. However, this article kind of points out that it's not so bad because Nvidia's GPU aren't selling for MSRP. The 3060 is actually retailing for roughly $500 on Newegg, and so a $350 Intel GPU is actually not a big deal. But you have to kind of take into consideration that market forces likely will affect Intel just as much as they're affecting AMD and Nvidia, so it's not quite clear whether or not we're gonna see these GPUs for MSRP. But there is better evidence for that to happen because it looks like, for the first time, as long as I've ever seen it, the RX 6900 XT, one of the top GPUs for rasterization out of the market, it costs $900 over on Newegg. It is $100 off, which is crazy considering the fact that these things were selling for $2,000 not too long ago. It was $50 off, then an additional $50 mail-in rebate that you could get for that. The price has gone up slightly to $949.99, so it's just the regular $1,000 that the card is supposed to cost with that $50 mail-in rebate added on top of that. Regardless, this is showing that GPUs are down to MSRP. This is still in stock. This price has been there the entire day and there's still enough GPUs for you to purchase, which if we're going to talk about things that are on sale, let's talk about UFD deals. Reese bringing you the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet. We also have an RTX 3080 Ti on sale for its MSRP of $1199.99 over on Amazon. You can pick that up right now. My delivery date's May 10th. You could potentially get it for five easy monthly payments of $240, but MSRP appears to be here, my friends, for GPUs. You want a closed liquid cooler, 280 mil from EVGA, $62, my friends. And then the Razer Viper Ultimate Hyperspeed Lightweight Wireless Gaming Mouse is only $79.99 right now, which is a discount of 47%. But in case you don't want to buy a GPU, GeForce Now is rolling out its 4K gaming subscription to places other than the NVIDIA Shield TV. It's going to be available on Mac and PC. As mentioned, it was only available on one specific device for this entire time, but now you can do it if you're on PC, which is good news. And if you're on iOS, you can now play Fortnite again, which could be good news to you. I'm not entirely sure how you feel about that one, but Xbox Cloud Gaming bringing Fortnite back to people on their mobile phones because you can actually log in and play it via cloud streaming. You'd go to xbox.com forward slash play and then you're able to do it. The streaming version is free. You can use touch controls. I tried it out for half a second. It was laggy as crap and I was like, I'm, I'm not good enough at Fortnite to compensate for the lag that's happening in cloud gaming, so I'm not going to do it. But in case you need to get your fix for Fortnite on your iPhone, 
That's now back, and Google has your back by changing your passwords in case they've been compromised on the dark web or the regular web if they were stored in plain text and now people have it, Google Assistant's here to help you. Google mentioned that this was a feature that they would be rolling out to Google Assistant where it will prompt you if it knows that you have a compromised password for you to change it on whatever website that you're actually using that on, and then it can change the password for you, which is helpful for people who uh, want to not have compromised passwords. Seems to be a good thing. What seems to be a bad thing for AMD, however, is it looks like, at least according to speculative reports right now, Zen 5, which is the generation after the generation that we're expecting to get, might actually be delayed because TSMC, the company that makes these chips, is going to give priority to Apple and Intel. Intel, one of their newest customers for the upcoming Arc GPUs, and they're going to keep using them for their graphics cards moving forward. It appears, according to reports, that TSMC is calling Intel a VIP customer for this process. Even though AMD currently is one of their top three customers, it looks like that's not enough for TSMC to give them priority and that Intel has sweetened the pot somehow in order for TSMC to give them that advantage. Apple obviously being the number one company for TSMC for many, many years, it makes a lot of sense that Apple would retain that slice of the pie. But for Intel to kind of stranglehold their way into this is a little curious indeed. What's also curious is the fact that the 7900 XT appears to be one of the first PCI Express 5.0 GPUs that getting found out in some driver details, which kind of makes sense, especially since AMD is launching PCI Express 5.0 for their AIM5 platform, having it on their GPUs as well makes sense. And before we get there though, the 6950 XT, AMD's GPU that we're expecting to release next week in leaked benchmarks is showing us that it beats the RTX 3090 Ti. We're really only expecting a memory bump on this GPU, but it does appear to be effective enough to give it the upper hand in time spy graphics scores where it beats the 3090 Ti by the tune of about 10%. It's up roughly 20% from the 6900 XT, which was faster than the 3090 in regular gaming performance. So if this somehow scales, which it's a gaming benchmark sort of, it doesn't apply to all games, this could bode really well for the 6950 XT to actually beat the RTX 3090 Ti. We still don't know the MSRP of the 6950 XT, but as long as it's under $2,000, then it probably will make a lot of sense for people who want to just play video games without ray tracing and don't care about some of the professional applications that NVIDIA gives you help with. But NVIDIA is not dead, lost, or otherwise because there's new unlocked BIOS out there to unlock the RTX 3090 Ti to 890 watts. Most of the RTX 3090 Ti's that are out there are under 500 watts, but an extreme overclocker was able to unlock the BIOS and get it so that the BIOS can go up to 890 watts. That doesn't mean it's actually can consume that amount, especially because a lot of these GPUs only have one power connector, so they can't support that. They can only go up to 600 watts, but with this unlocked BIOS, there are several that can go up to 614 watts or potentially 615 watts. And if you click the link in the video description, you can get the Extreme Overclocking BIOS yourself in case you want to mess around with it for your $2,000 GPU that you potentially turn into a paperweight. Who knows? All I know is that I'm done with this episode of Hot News. We'll see you back here on Monday, my friends.